Hey guys, what's up? This is the Wizard for the U of T StarCraft Club, and I'm here with Pikachu. And today we are going to be doing our second episode of Office Hours. We got a replay sent in from one of our club members, uh, Neck, the red Protoss you see. Spawning up here, close air positions on the Shattered Temple, and this is a Silver League replay he sent us, and he's just gonna we're just gonna take a look and analyze his game. Um, you know, see if we can offer him some tips on what he's doing and to improve his game a little bit. And uh Pikachu is gonna be here helping me with that today. <coughs> Most definitely. Okay, so what do you think we should talk about today? And yeah, so today we're going to be, uh, our theme kind of for the episode is just going to be uh, fundamentals. Given that this is a lower level, or a lower league replay, uh, we're going to see a lot of, you know, sloppy things, like basic things that you wouldn't see at a, you know, platinum or a diamond level. Uh, problems with macro, you know, unrefined build orders and stuff like that. And that's fine. There's no reason to expect that uh, a silver league player should be able to have all those things down pat. So basically what me and Pikachu are going to do today is we're just going to um, try and hammer home some of the more fundamentals of StarCraft 2 in general. Just uh, like the, the whole game. It doesn't matter what race you're playing or what, uh, you know, what style you're playing or anything like that. We're just going to try and hammer home some of the basic fundamental things that you should be doing in every single one of your games. Alright, so let's talk about what is fundamentals. So I basically see fundamentals being broken down into three separate points. Macro, scouting, and build order. Macro being like, you know, perfect warp in cycles every time they're up. You know, pro production, very important. Scouting, so always knowing what your opponent is doing, always having map control, these kind of things. And then finally, build order, which has to do with your opening build and also like making the production buildings, making the proper production buildings for the unit composition that you will want later in the game. So already, yeah. yeah, we already see Neck here doing uh, something very uh, interesting, which he's trying to hide his tech. So let's talk about hiding tech early game is. Okay, so yeah, like uh, Tim said, we got um, Neck here, and he's making his gateway in the uh, back right corner of his base here. And uh, already this is something that I don't agree with at all, because uh, it, is a, it is a tactic. It is something you can do. Um, should you do it? I don't think so because um, he probably knows he's playing against a Terran unless this guy rolled random. Of course, I couldn't see what like he he saw on the loading screen. But um, you've got like putting your first pylon back here in the back right already limits the possibilities of you having vision of your ramp. So like an SCV could like come up this ramp and you wouldn't even know it. You could start building like proxy racks or something like that doing all these sorts of wacky weird stuff and you wouldn't even see it and your units are going to take a really long time to get from the back right corner all the way to uh, your ramp. So that's already something that I don't really like too much about uh, next build. Yeah, definitely. So focusing on the third point I said about the fundamentals, so really you see a diversion from the common normal Protoss play. So right now we see that Neck has three gateways up even before he decides to get any kind of cyber next score. So he, right now he's not going to have any stalker tech, no sentry tech, nothing really to hold an early kind of Terran aggression. All he can make is zealots, and as we know, zealots aren't really the best thing against early Terran uh, bio. And he's also got two assimilators running, not being able to spend any of this gas early game. So this di small divergence in a normal standard build order, unless you're going for like a proxy two zealot all in kind of bull crap, like. It's, it's just not practical, like your efficiency goes down and all these kind of things. And right now we see even a forge going up. So what do you think a forge is used for usually early game, Quiz? Uh, I mean, the forge is good, like, the forge is a great thing to have up in the early game because, you know, getting upgrades is, a, is just good in general. Like, they'll benefit your units that you have out right now and they'll benefit all the units you're going to make in the future. But, I mean, you hit the nail right in the head when you said that his build is already way out of whack. He's going to have a huge discrepancy be between the amount of minerals he has and the amount of stuff he can spend on, or the amount of gas that he can spend coming out of production facilities. His cybernetics core just came up, and right now his warp gate is super delayed, I'd say, and all he can do right now is build stalkers, like, just build them out of a gateway, which is very inefficient and uh, not too good at all. So, I mean, I'm, I'm in complete agreement with you on that in the sense that, um, you know, you just got to, you got to, this is something that you have to look at and um, get, you know, just figure out because 
having so much gas and you know not being able to use it is just it's just very inefficient as you can see on his forge already he's got the plus one ground weapons getting upgraded and he's also got plus one shields queued up and uh, you shouldn't have upgrades queued at seven minutes in the game um, but yeah that's a uh, it's just exactly like you said so basically what I think is a great idea to do especially at the lower levels is uh, you know this is something that you and me talked about when we were watching this replay is um, just find a single build order like a solid build order with like a great opening and you know um, good macro behind it nothing too cheesy or all any and then just uh, you know practice that and you know hopefully and that'll definitely be way more advantageous than um, just kind of throwing up all your buildings haphazardly and hoping things work out yeah most definitely like build order is very crucial in these early stages of the game and we see kind of something interesting he does he goes for this shield upgrade now we talk about like the different upgrades it's a little bit more advanced but like usually tear and armor is great we talk about like the zealot zealot 50 shield 100 health so the armor upgrade applies for 100 health of the zealot while the shield upgrade only applies for 50 health so like other than like archons usually armor upgrade is much better early stages of the game you don't typically see shields until later but going on my second fundamental which is scouting i like what neck is doing like if you go down and look at the bottom right you see neck is a probe near the Terran's expansion. This is great to check if he's the expansion or when he's moving out. And he also built a proxy pile on there. So this is just great scouting by Neck. Yeah, and this proxy pile gives you so many abilities. It helps you reinforce. Um, and with this probe, he can just easily run out and check to see if his opponent's expanded yet. He's got the observer coming out. And um, all that's great, good jazz. And then he's got the zealot controlling the middle of the map. Um, and now we're going to be uh, taking just a brief pause because Tim brought up a great point when we were watching this replay <coughs> about um, army positioning so I'm gonna just go ahead and pause it uh, right now alright so what I want to talk about here is that the Protoss as we see is right in front of the Terran's base so at this point um, Neck has with his observer has seen that the Terran has a starport firstly the Terran has a tech lab which means it's very um, high chance that there will be Banshee play coming out and also that because it's a lower level maybe they're going for dropship tech this immediately gives signs that your army needs to be in your base say if the Terran goes for a drop here then your Terran your army is way out of position and won't be able to handle the drop whatsoever especially say if it's a Banshee then you're not going to warp in Zealots in time or anything of the sorts and if you're warping stalkers at the base and trying to stop the Banshee the Banshee will get a ton of kills so you want to be ready for any kind of drop play and any kind of uh, Banshee sort of shenanigans. And also, because your army is all the way out here, if he drops and goes for like a bunch of marine marauders in your base, you won't be able to stop it with two or three warpins. You'll need your army there, and then you'll be forced into a base trade situation. But as you see in the Terran space, he has siege tanks. It is never a good idea to try and uh, base trade against Terran because he'll lift off for one, and if he has siege tanks, it's so impossible to win, especially as Protoss versus Terran. Yeah, like getting up this ramp is just not going to be possible when he's even got like one or two tanks. His tanks aren't even in very good position, but yeah, he's there's no way he's going to break up this ramp. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So yeah, uh, exactly what Tim was saying there. The army positioning is so important. Um, I feel especially in this uh, in the in in this mid game, where whoa, what's going on? Sorry, what? You still with us, Tim? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was weird. It's, I, I don't know. I think that my voice was typing through your speakers or something, and I was hearing my own voice or something like that. Alright, anyways. Very strange. <laughs> uh, technical difficulties aside, yeah, no, it, Tim was exactly right about that. Uh, your army just needs to be back when you see that the Terran has the ability to attack your base without you even, um, without, you with, you don't have anything there to defend it kind of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So, and also, another thing I want to bring up is the last part of Fundamentals which I didn't cover, which is the macro. So uh, back at uh, next base, if we take a look, for one thing, it's just a higher level thing is the Chrono Boost. Like he's not using his Chrono Boost very effectively. Like right now, I see like at least fifty something energy on his Nexus. Yeah, but I don't really think that's something that you could harp on at lower levels. I know it's something that he should pay attention to in the future, but like lower levels, you know, it's hard to it's hard for even you know anybody you know Zergs. It's hard for them to uh, use their macro mechanics properly, like injects and Terran to use their mules and stuff like that at lower levels. I mean, when you have, like, 18 APM, then, you know, it's kind of difficult to do that stuff. 
Yeah. But no, I agree with what you're saying. Uh, I do want to point out the fact that Neck is doing an excellent job at the first fundamental, which is workers. Um, he hasn't had many discrepancies with workers. You know, he's been making workers pretty consistently throughout this entire game. I think there's only a few times where I saw him, like maybe 20 seconds, where he doesn't make a worker, which is actually is like absolutely excellent at this uh, at this level. Yeah, definitely. Like for instance, if you bring up the income tab and you see like the Terran and the uh, Neck here, he has 34 over 20, and that's just an amazing position. But the one other thing I want to bring up is that um, saturation. A lot of people don't know at lower levels what the proper saturation they should have at their main or their natural. So optimal saturation, like the optimal you can be, most optimal, is 24 probes off 8 patches off your main, just on minerals. So that brings about 30 probes per base is your optimal saturation, including gas. So usually when you want to throw up your natural, you want to be able to start probe production again so that you can at least transfer 16 onto your natural and then you have 16 in your main. That is the least optimal, like, I mean, the minimal you would want on both your bases. And right now he has 34, which is great because he'll be ready to transfer it. It'll be perfect saturation on both bases. All right, cool. So I think we can resume it now. Yep. Okay, ready? <laughs> We've paused for too long. So uh, one, two, two three, three. Go. And so the game's continuing along. Um, this Terran, you know, he's just macroing up in his bit, or not really macroing at all, actually. He's stopped making workers, it seems, and... Uh, He's just massing up a huge army. And uh, this is something that I'd like to talk about now. Um, is not a fundamental per se, but it's just something that you'll learn, I think, with uh, the more games you play, the more you'll learn this. Uh, when you see a Terran defensively posh like this, and Neck definitely sees this because his observer is right over the Terran army. Um, when you see a Terran this defensively postured, and you know that you have an expansion coming up, um, you don't need to do any sort of pressure or anything like that at all. Like, you just should go back to your base, um, be aware, keep scouting him, and just macro up and tech up. Like, it's good. I see him getting a robotics bay, a robotic support bay at his base, which is great, because that means he's going to be able to get Colossi coming up. And um, that's excellent. But 